this is Ema. You know, every time I drive along Lenox Avenue and pass the Morning Gazette, I always think of the time that Andy and the Kingfish put a classified ad in the paper to rent the basement of the Lodge Hall. Yeah, I never will forget. They sent lightning over to the newspaper with the ad. <laughs> For rent, large room in basement, private entrance, respectable neighborhood. Reasonable rent, suitable for office or workshop. Apply Kingfish, Mystic Knights of the Sea Lodge Hall. How'd that sound to you, Lou? Oh, fine, fine. Anything you say, Duke, you know that. How about you, Jennings? True artist, my dear Duke, can work any place. Fine, fine. Gentlemen, I'm glad to see that as usual we're in accord. All right, Lou, you go on over to this Mystic Knights of the Sea Lodge Hall and rent the room. You get the equipment together, Jennings, see if you can get it all moved over there by tomorrow evening. Right. Your plates all ready? Ready. Look. With that basement room and these new plates, I'll print you a batch of $20 bills you can pass on J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Lou, I told you get over there and see this kingfish. <laughs> Yes, sir. I know you're going to be very happy in that room. <laughs> can we move our printing equipment in there tomorrow? Oh, sure. You can move in there anytime. My decorator, Mr. Brown, is decorating the place now. Mr. Brown, uh, he the one who's done the Waldorf Castoria. Okay, <laughs> see you tomorrow. You being in the printing business, I know you're going to make a lot of money down there. <laughs> Andy, how you come with the decorating? Doing a nice, neat job? Yeah, I really doing a neat job. A lot of work to this thing. Well, congratulations. Are you a stupid fool? Ain't you got no regard for other folks' pinkies? Now look at you. Now look at you. I don't know who the paint looked the better on. You or the wall. <laughs> ain't too bad a job, though. Yeah, but Kingfish... The trouble is, this ain't never gonna look like a first class job with that little hole in the wall there. Oh, simple, Andy. I got a little picture up there in the large hole. I'll just cover up the thing. Wait a minute, boy, I'll get it for you. Yeah, go get the thing. Yeah, I'll tag it up here. Uh, uh, you'll tag it up. Not you, your big clumsy ox. I'll do the tagging. You see, Andy, there's a science to this. You got to tippy tap the nail just right, or else you'll knock the plaster loose. I think you chip it tapped it over a little bit there, Kingfish. What must we do now? Well, nothing to worry about, Andy. We'll get a bigger picture. There's one up there called Whistler's Mother. That ought to do the trick. Yeah. Well, that does it, Andy. <laughs> Andy, we're going to attack this in scientific. We'll just scientific it on up there, because we're running out of pictures. Ah, uh, that ought to get it. Andy, I think you need one more little tippy tap. Here, eh, Jennings? Yeah. 
Hope nothing happens to spoil it. What do you mean, spoil it? Oh, like that guy did in St. Louis. Who's to get nosy around here? I don't know. Maybe those two birds upstairs. Suppose they do. Just like in St. Louis. Uh, I just mulling over a little deal here. Yeah. Sounds like them fellas are working hard down there in the basement. Uh, what is it like, Kingfish? Oh, two charming gentlemen, Andy. You wouldn't want to meet too sweet a boy. Mm. Yeah, what are you doing with that bus, huh? Oh, uh, this is for my new gal, Carolyn. You know, I introduced you to her the other day. Oh, yeah. You was really insaturated with that gal, didn't you? Oh, sure. You know, I'd marry her tomorrow. Only I don't think I was good enough for her. Where you get that idea from, boy? Oh, Mama. Give me a box of candy, Andy. Yeah. You got your own personal card, did you? Uh, no, Kingfish. I was fresh out of personal cards. Uh, I've been thinking, though, maybe I could go down to these printing fellas and have them to print me up one. Yeah. <laughs> well, come on down, Andy. I'll introduce you to them. Couple of charming gentlemen. You know, I never thought that Andrew Jackson could look that pretty. <laughs> that makes exactly $10,000. Not a bad day's work, huh? Mm. Little, my little friend, I think that calls for celebration. Yeah, but what about the dough? We can't leave it here, and Duke said not to take no chances. Oh, Duke this, Duke that. The money's a safe here, it'd be in Fort Knox. I'll hide it here behind the press. The artist in me cries out for a three-inch sirloin. Not that way. The back door, stupid. Over the way, Lewis. You got any dough? Yeah, but don't let's go to no expensive place. Money don't grow on trees, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we carry a couple extra keys, Andy. Fella never know where he'll have to get locked in a closet or something. Come on in, Andy. Ain't nobody here. Kingfish, hmm. you think that's right? Go busting in here like this when these fellas ain't here? Oh, sure, Andy. Well, we might print up a couple of cards ourselves. Those fellas wouldn't mind. Mm, there ain't much equipment here for a printing business. No, there ain't no type of nothing yet. Mm. What you got there, Kingsley? And they ain't using nothing but green ink. Must be working on St. Patrick's Day cards or something. <laughs> nice looking printing press here, all right. Uh, careful, Andy. You'll let him get your hand caught in there. Yeah. You know, Andy, all of a sudden, I got a funny feeling about being here. Those fellas come back, they might get sodas busting in the place. Come on, we better get out of here. <laughs> come on, Andy, I said, let's go. I can't, Kingfish. What have you done now, you big dummy? I think it's stuck in there for good. Uh, take it easy, Andy. I'll get your new sand and jiffy. <laughs> you really jammed in there, boy. Oh, me. Keep tugging, Kingfish. <laughs> Holy smoke, something to give on me. <laughs> uh, take it easy, son. There must be some way to get you loose here. Let's see here. <laughs> Kingfish, stop this thing. What did you start it for, stupid? You're liable to break the man's bread. Get me out of this thing, Kingfish. I don't like this. Well, now, wait a minute. I'll get you out there in a jiffy. I'll be calm. Can't lose our heads here. Uh, stop it. I'm freeing it up. <laughs> Kingfish, we ain't getting no place. Why, <laughs> you big dummy? Come on, let's get out of here. Something wrong, Andy? I wonder how that picture Andrew Jackson got on my cup. <laughs> uh, listen, Andy. 
Why did you leave the box of candy down there at the first place? Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll take care of it for you. Yeah, I'll write a card. Uh, yeah, Mr. Kingsley, sure. You want me to sign? Uh, listen, Lightning. Andy left a box down there in the basement that we rented to them printing fellas. Go down there and get the thing and deliver it to Miss Carolina Watkins, Lenny Tom's apartment. Uh, you said the box is down in the basement? Yeah, Andy left it down there somewhere. Stick that card on it and get on over there with it. Uh, yeah. And Lightning, you'll find some wrapping paper in the back room there. Wrap the box up nice. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> I'll wrap it up real nice, then I'll play it on over there with it. Caroline, who was that at the door? Oh, that silly fellow Lightning just brought me a package from Andy. Probably ain't even worth opening, but what can you expect from a no-good loafer like Andy Brown? He don't never have no money to take you out, and you ain't been on nothing but walking dates with him for the past two weeks. And Caroline, of all the men you go out with, Andy Brown is the biggest bum of them all. I know, Mama, but... Mama, look! It's money! Twenty dollar bills! Hundreds of them! Oh, Caroline, there must be thousands of dollars here! But I always did say Andy Brown was a dear sweet boy! What a wonderful present! Yes, Mama, and it's all for me! Here's a card that came with it. If you like this, I'll send you five more pounds next week. Andy! Mmm! Mmm! Caroline, honey, you got to be real sweet to Andy. Because any time a man can give away money by the pound, he's got to be awful rich. Whee! Whee! Hey, Miss, you ought to see the box of candy I sent Caroline. Two pounds of deluxe caramel. Sent me back 39 cents. Oh, that's nice, Andy. Andy! <laughs> you darling boy! Who, me? Son. Son? Oh, Andy, I can't tell you how sweet that was of you to send that box over to Caroline. Oh, that was nothing. A mere trifle. I'm going to send even a bigger box next week. Uh, maybe five or ten pounds. Oh, you darling boy, you little thing. Caroline's gone shopping now, but she's going to call you and thank you herself. Oh, you sweet boy. Yeah, that'll be great. Goodbye for now, son. Yeah. So long, Mom. You know, Amos, them two women sure must be crazy about candy. <laughs> I told you we shouldn't have left it here. Keep looking. Forget the postmortems. Hey, look at this. I'll bet those guys upstairs were just... Yeah. We gotta find Duke right away and tell him what happened. We got all our bills. All the beautiful $20 bills. What do you mean it's counterfeit? It can't be. I'm sorry, miss. But if you'll wait just a few moments, the management has already called the police department. And I'm quite oh, sure that they can... Oh, lady! Hey, lady, wait just a moment, please. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Andy. Let's get out of here. Come on, Andy. <laughs> Hello? Who? Just a moment. It's for you, Andy. It's Caroline. Hello. How is you, honey baby? You know when you sent me over that ten thousand dollars this morning? Uh, yeah, I sent that. Uh, what was that again, darling? Listen, Andy, you know when you sent me over that ten thousand? Excuse me, honey, but I'm having a little trouble with my hair here. Wait till I switch over to the other side. Now, what was that again? Huh? <laughs> Did you repeat that? Something wrong, Andy? I don't know, Kingfish. Now, what was that about $10,000? Whatever it is, Andy, count me in on it. Andy Brown, you listen to me. You know the money you sent me was counterfeit. You say the money was counterfeit? 
On second thought, count me out of the mess. <laughs> it may be your idea of a joke, but it ain't mine. Mama just threw the rest of that no good money in the furnace. I could have been thrown in jail. I don't ever want to see you or speak to you again, you no good bum. But that's it, Mr. Andy. I went down to basement and got the box like he told me. It was sitting right there behind the printing press. Behind the printing press? Uh, yeah. Kingfish, I left that box of candy on the shelf. You must have got the wrong box. That box you got had $10,000 in it. The Kingfish, that's now wait a minute. That's going to get panicked. Uh, we got to be calm. Yeah, all of us. We got to be calm. Got to be calm about this thing, Andy. Yeah, but wait a minute, Kingfish. Where would these men in the basement get $10,000 in counterfeit money? Well, now, let's examine the thing. Where would they get $10,000? And first of all, what business is they in? Yeah. They're in the printing business. And in the printing business, in the printing business, in the printing business, yeah. Yeah, and they ain't using nothing but green ink. Annie, putting two and two together, we comes up in one of the nastiest foes we ever run into. Yeah. Them men's is making counterfeit money in our basement. And there ain't but one thing to do. Now, we can't take no chance on phoning from here. Now, you wait here, and I will run down to the lunchroom and call the police. <laughs> Nothing doing, Kingfish. We'll both go down and call the police. Okay, Andy, this way. <laughs> you stupid bum, didn't you know that was a closet? <laughs> Nanny, we're gonna trample our own stuff to death before we get to the lunchroom. I sure wish I knowed what was going on around. <laughs> Everything all right, huh, Kingfish? Oh, yeah, Andy, our trouble is over now. With the police coming, we'll go back to the lodge hall and wait for them. Hey, Andy, there ain't no danger now. Hello? This is Lieutenant Parker, police headquarters. Cops. Yes, Lieutenant, what can I do for you? Well, we've got sort of a confused call here. Something about counterfeiters in the basement. I thought we'd better check on it before we sent a man over. Oh, yes, yes. Some of the boys must have been up to their old tricks again. You see, Lieutenant, this is a boys' school here, and I'm the headmaster, and... Oh, boys' school, huh? Well, boys will be boys. I'm terribly sorry you were troubled, Lieutenant, but I assure you there'll be no recurrence. I intend to administer a thorough thrashing to the boys. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Anderson. You two have messed this thing up to a fairly well. You get on back to the hotel. I'll handle this. Give me that box of candy, you idiot. I don't think the police has got here yet. I don't see no squad cars. Oh, take it easy, Andy. We ain't got nothing to worry about. All we gotta do is get into the office and wait for him. Yeah, we'll watch for him out the window here. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I've been waiting for you. Uh, see, Andy? They done sent over a clean cool, man, already. That quick service, all right. Yeah. Listen, we've been expecting you, all right. Now, you see, the thing is... Uh, excuse me. We don't want to take no chances here. Yeah, we don't want no one to know what's going on. Ha, ha. We want to play this thing smart. Oh, no, no, no. Sit down. Just sit down. We give you all the dope. We give you all the dope. Now, you see, them dirty crooks rented our basement room. Now, we were snooping around down there, and my friend carried down a box of caramel. And the box of caramel got mixed up with their box of money, and that's how we found out they were counterfeiters. Now, what do you know about that? Very interesting. Have a piece of candy? Oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Now, we first got wise to these guys when, uh... <laughs> uh, just, uh, excuse me for my shooting, but this candy you give me here is just wintergreen or my carbo cherries or something. 
They're caramels. <laughs> Master, you ain't from police headquarters, is you? No. Then you ain't no full of brush man, is you? <laughs> no. I know. You was a candy salesman, that's what you is. You pass not free samples. See there, Andy? No. I'm from downstairs. Oh, well, Andy, as I was saying, I better be getting along. Sit down. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, gentlemen, I think we've wasted enough time. Where's the money? Uh, he want to know where the money is. <laughs> Uh, uh, do you mean the money that was in the box down in the basement? That's what I mean. He mean the money that was in the box down in the basement, Andy. Yeah, the green money. Uh, the green money? That's right. The green money. And I can give you exactly one minute to tell me where the 10,000 is. Uh, you couldn't make that exactly one hour, could you? Gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm afraid we don't understand each other. Well, mister... It's a long story. <laughs> well, you see, the thing is, uh, well, it was, as I was... <laughs> I've had enough. I want that money, and I want it now. It took me two years to have those plates made, and I'm not having anyone... Well, you know who that is at that door? That happens to be the police. Yeah, we done called them before. We got the best of you now. All right, come on in, boys. There he is, surround him. Hi, sir. What's new? Oh, me. It ain't the police, it's child only lawyer. <laughs> yeah, I just thought I'd drop by and pass the time. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't like to interrupt no personal hold-up, so uh, I'll be seeing you fellas later. Sit down, all of you. Now, wait a minute. You can't do that to me. I've got my legal rights. And I've got this. Yeah. You have got the best of it, ain't you? If I hesitate to resort to violence, my patience is becoming exhausted. Now, wait a minute, mister. Don't you dare harm a hair on the head of this man. And don't you harm one hair on the head of... And don't you hurt this man, either. Remember, I is a lawyer and a witness to this whole thing. When I come in this room here, I see what was going on. When I come in here, I see you with that gun there. And when I come in here, I see these two poor men cowering in the corner. And another thing, witnesses can be eliminated. <laughs> when I come in this empty room, I didn't see nothing. <laughs> Listen, mister. If you just put that gun away, I'll show you where the money is. We don't want no trouble. All right, but I won't tolerate any further nonsense. Yes, sir. Right this way. And you two stay right here in this room. Yes, sir. And don't use the telephone either. No, sir. <laughs> Kingfish. Do Andy know where the money is? Unfortunately, he don't, Calhoun. Carolina's mama done burn it. Great balls of fire. And we got a lot of work to do here. You get the reef for the front door. I'll call Woodlawn Cemetery. Tell them to start digging the guest room. Remove Andy's name from the membership list and get a tuxedo. When Anderson here told me this wasn't a boys' school, I decided we'd better come over and investigate. Well, I'm sorry, mister. You couldn't miss them more than two minutes. Well, we'll get him sooner or later. But I'm sorry for you boys that we didn't get him here. For information regarding his capture, there's a reward of $1,500. Uh, mister, would you mind repeating that last part again? A reward of $1,500. Holy smoke! $1,500. Hiya, Kingfish, what's up? Andy, Andy, you're alive. Oh, Andy. Listen, you bum, why did you take that man out of here? We just missed out on $1,500 reward for him. If you had put a bullet hole in your head, that would be the only thing in there. Andy, I've disgusted with you. Leave me out of here. Well, excuse me, mister, but who does I see about getting the $1,500? You mean he didn't get away? Well, sir, <laughs> you see, I told him where the money was, and he reached in there to get it himself. And he's right down in the basement now. <laughs>